thank you everybody for coming. It's it's so wonderful to see everybody. I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Doug, fellow Iowan, good to see you here. Corey, good to see you again. Um, so lots of great, um, great people here. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name uh, is Kate Murray here hosting our first of the three Thursdays with Dave Myers and Nathan DeWall. And we're super excited that you all could join us for today's topic, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion and um, APA's new introductory psychology initiative. Um, okay, so the quick housekeeping issues. Um, everyone's muted upon entry in Zoom, and that's really just to help with the background noise. But of course, ask questions, unmute. Um, join in the discussion. We certainly want you to be participating. This is um, such a benefit for us to hear from all of you on these topics. So please do um, jump in when you have uh, some comments. If you don't want to jump in by unmuting, feel free to use the chat to ask questions or make comments. We'll be reading that along the way. And we're going to record this for you. It's not going to be shared publicly. It's just for the people who are attending. If you're not familiar with Zoom, pretty easy to use. You should see this uh, control bar uh, on your screen. The functions that you're going to need today are for audio and video, and that's so that you can either unmute or get your video on and off. The chat function is where you can um, type some comments or questions to us, and we'll check that out. And then you have a transcript button um, if you would like to have um, some subtitles. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is just some very quick introductions. Then we're gonna get into diversity and inclusion for a few minutes on what we're doing, our initiatives here at McMillan. And then we're gonna talk about inclusive teaching and the new intro psych initiative, which I know is something everyone is very curious about and how we're integrating that. Um, we'll give you a little bit of a preview on the new edition of exploring psychology, which I know a lot of you are using. Um, and again, please feel free to participate throughout this, either with unmuting or with the chat. Okay, so the Myers and DeWall team, I wanted to just let you know who is on the meeting. We have, of course, our wonderful authors, David Myers. Everyone can give a little wave in their window, um, or you can unmute and say hi if you like. Nathan DeWall, um, longtime editors, Christine Bruni and Carly Stembridge. Again, my name hey. is Kate. Um, and then if everyone, we probably don't have enough, so there's so many people on the call, probably don't have enough time for everyone to unmute and introduce themselves, but it would be awesome if you would want to put your name and where you're from in the chat so we, so we can kind of see where, where people are from. Okay, so I'm, we're just gonna get right into it since this, we're gonna try to end this in less than an hour. Um, so the people kind of leading the beginning of our um, conversation today, uh, Liz Hammer, who um, works on some projects with Dave and Nathan and was on the um, teacher training and development team for the uh, Intro Psych Initiative and she's the director um, for the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Faculty Development and a Kellogg Professor in Teaching at Xavier University in New Orleans. And we're gonna start off with Coltrane um, Stansbury, who is the Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here at McMillan. So Coltrane, I'm just gonna hand it right off to you. Thanks so much, Kate. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. This is so exciting uh, to be talking about this topic, um, especially being that here at McMillan Learning, we have had um, a special opportunity to really ramp up our diversity, equity, and inclusion work uh, going forward from last year. I came aboard on in February um, of this year um, in a new role, um, really designed to bring together the strategy for the company. Um, and in order to do that, I had to really um, take a look at some of the things we've been doing, mainly on a volunteer basis at the company, and, and ramp them up into a uniform strategy for the enterprise. And so in doing so, we looked at um, really bucketing our work in really three key areas of our products, our people and our culture and um, in creating a uniformed vision statement for the company, um, I came upon with uh, work um, done with our executives, um, the statement of, uh, you know, we are committed to boldly lead in education by driving innovation through inclusive design, which is our products, reflective uh, a workforce reflective of our diverse communities of learners our people and by cultivating a culture of belonging where all are valued which is our culture and under our products right uh, people and culture you know we, we use these key impact areas to really design all of the work that we do the work we do through our um, diversity um, council which is made up of all of our executives vp and above um, the work we do through our employee resource groups 
Uh, we had one uh, beginning uh, in my tenure uh, and now have scaled to four more. Uh, that's to address um, the uh, issues, concerns, and perspectives of our Black employees, Asian employees, our um, women employees, uh, those who are in the dis disabilities community, uh, mental health issues, as well as um, the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and then um, also using this work as we embed the work more uh, in our business practices, whether that be editorial or on the sales and marketing side. And so for our products, right, we've got this commitment to take bold steps to assure that our products and services consider the backgrounds and needs and challenges of our communities of, of learners. We'll settle for nothing less than being innovative, curious, and collaborative in our approach to solving problems. Currently, what we're doing is making sure we take a look, for instance, of all of our DEI um, uh, and editorial, our DEI practices to make sure we've got the right feedback and the right um, editorial lens. In our people, we've committed to being more intentional around our efforts to attract and retain top diverse talent who bring unique pr perspectives, varied skills and diversity of thought to our teams and the way we do our work, which is a uh, resident in the fact that we've created new um, standards for hiring practices to make sure that hiring managers are checking for their biases and have the right language before going out uh, to market and the right lens for looking for talent. And then lastly, under our culture, we're committed to teaching, discovery, and social responsibility, to cultivating a culture where everyone is respected and valued for their experiences and their contributions, where we encourage our employees to speak up, maintain a growth mindset. And, and really in our culture, the work has been, as I stated before, ramping up our employee resource group community, making sure that there is um, tr training for all employees at all levels in unconscious bias, inclusive leadership, and lastly, in allyship. And then making sure that we've got the right representative events and activations that show both internal and external commitment to the work. So thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about our strategy and I'll turn it over to Liz. Uh, thanks. thanks so much, Coltrane. And uh, what I'm going to speak about falls right in line with that um, the vision that the company has. And I just have to start by saying how glad I am to be here today. This is a issue that is very near and dear to me. And I would not be here without the invitation and, uh, to join the team from Dave and Nathan. Thanks, thanks y'all for being so welcoming to me. Um, so I, I really care about this topic a lot and I'm, I'm delighted to speak with you about it. Um, I, we're gonna start just from a little bit from the beginning just so that we all have the same language and then we'll quickly get to, to some discussion because I know we're really here for that, to learn from each other. But I just wanna be sure we have the same idea about what is inclusive pedagogy and, and talk about this. Inclusive pedagogy, because it's getting a lot of attention now, right? It's, it's come to the forefront of the consciousness of higher ed, and it's getting a lot of um, discussion and a lot of attention at different uh, conferences and different publications. But this is really a method of teaching in which instructors and learners work together to create a supportive environment that gives each learner equal access to learning. And I want to say that again, because that's the important part, point. Each learner in your classroom has equal access to learning. And um, just so a little bit of my background, if you don't know Xavier University of Louisiana, it is located in New Orleans, and it is the only historically black Catholic institution in the country and, and actually in the Western hemisphere. And so it's, um, and so my, my perspective on this tends to come from a, a racial lens and looking at racial equity and racial justice. But it's not just that, it's every learner in my classroom has an equal access to learner, learning, whether they sit in the front and are an extrovert like me, or whether they sit in the back and are an introvert, whether they, um, uh, re regardless of their, their religious background, regardless of their various identities, like regardless of their um, uh, capacities for learning or learning differences, every learner in the classroom has equal access to learning. So I want us to think about that when we're talking about this issue and discussing it, that it goes beyond, um, uh, you know, it includes all kinds of identities and all kinds of personalities and everything, everything in our classroom. Um, the other thing I want us to think about in our discussions is that it's 
it's important in this work that it's not just a focus on what you don't do, right? But on what actions you're actually taking to make this equal learning environment. It's really, and, I, and I've just seen this in, in the work that I do, it's really easy to fall back on, well, I don't laugh at homophobic jokes. I don't call on a person of color to speak for the entire, you know, the entire population. I don't, um, you know, fill in the blank. Um, but what we don't do uh, is often is not translated into an inclusive environment, right? Okay, it's good that we're not doing those things. Let's not do those things. But what action are we actually taking? What are we actually doing to show each student that um, they're an individual and they have a right to learn in our class? And then again, this is for a different time, but there's a ton of data on that it, this is important for success. A sense of belonging in the classroom, a sense of in inclusivity in our classroom is important for student success. Um, it's important for all of our students. It's important for a training of uh, social justice, but it's especially important for students who are underrepresented or who are first generation or who might for other reasons feel like they might not belong. Okay, it's really important for student success. Thanks. Um, so, uh, Let's get the specific to IntroPsych, and then we'll then we'll come to the IPI, the, the IntroPsych initiative. What can we actually do to have inclusive uh, teaching in IntroPsych? There's about four or five different kind of key characteristics of inclusive teaching and inclusive pedagogy. I picked this first one because I think it's a great place to start, right? Um, and and it's something what we're going to talk about in a minute covers some of the other characteristics. But this is a great place to start creating an inclusive classroom climate. How do we do this? Like, how can we do this? And how can we do this in our intro site courses, especially? Um, there are some key components to creating an inclusive classroom uh, climate. Um, the key pin to it is to build instructor student rapport and build student student rapport. We are in psychology. We are blessed with having TOP as our journal, teaching of psychology as our journal. We know this, right? We have been doing research on, on instructor student rapport for a long time. So we know this. But you know, we we need to always be attentive to this. You know, do what is our rapport with our students? Um, and, and what are the kind of things we can do to build rapport? And then how can we encourage through active learning and you know other activities, how can we encourage that student student rapport? So that where we all know each other, that way we all feel included, right? That's a really important in creating an inclusive classroom climate. Um, we also need to treat each student as an individual. Okay? and avoid stereotyping. And again, stereotyping can go anywhere from like racial stereotyping, which is what comes to mind usually first, to stereotyping students based on, uh, again, their activity on the first day of class, where they choose to sit, if they're talking to their neighbor. Like we don't know, uh, you know we don't know each of these students individually. And so we have to uh, try to get to, to treat them as individuals as well as we can and avoid stereotyping them. Um, it's really interesting to me in my position as teaching center director, I get to do a lot of classroom observations and um, I, it's it really changed my teaching because I'll go into these classrooms and I'll see, you know, I'll be sitting in the, in the, you know, classroom with the students and uh, you can see little clumps of students talking and you can see professors getting kind of annoyed by it. And I'm telling you, most of the time they're talking about the class content. Most of the time they're not being disruptive. They're asking each other questions because they didn't get something. So we really need to avoid stereotyping students. Next, we need to convey the same level of confidence in all students. First two, I imagine we're all sitting here going, we do that, I do that, of course I do this. Do we do the third one always, especially if we know the student by reputation from somebody else, had the student in another class, Again, judge the student based on some kind of characteristic. Do we convey to them, not in hidden in our own mind, right? This isn't about what we're not doing. You know, I'm not saying I don't have faith in you. So, uh, you know, that's fair. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about are we actively conveying the same level of confidence in all students? Are we um, reinforcing their questioning the exact same way and equitably? Are we responding to them in the same way? Are we doing the little things that convey confidence in all students? Because it makes a difference, makes a huge difference. Um, and then we need to address challenges to equity or inclusiveness in our classroom head on. 
head on. And this one, you know, we if if we have not been doing this, this one is something you might need some work with it with it, uh, the faculty developer or teaching center on your own campus. Like you might need some help or some training on how how do I best do this. But I'm telling you, if you have an issue of um, inequity and justice, uh, a comment from another student that is that is um, biased, damaging, um, or hurtful to another population. By ignoring it, you're sending a message. Okay, by you're sending a message by not dealing with it, uh, just as you would if you're dealing with it. So we need to know that the, that students who are affected by those kind of comments notice, and now all of a sudden they aren't included in this learning experience. So we need to um, engage in the self-reflection. It's not easy work for, for white people. It's not easy work, but we need to engage in the self-reflection it takes to be able to have uh, be able to address those challenges head on. And then another thing is we need to ask students for feedback about the inclusivity of our classrooms. We ask for, you know, especially again, psychologists, we're open to this kind of assessment. We ask for feedback about everything you know, about our test, about our lectures. We ask for feedback about everything. Do we ask for feedback about how inclusive was this class? How did I, what were some things I could have done to make a more sense of belonging? Like if, if these aren't in your teaching evaluations uh, at your campus, which I'm imagining they're for the most part they're not, then it's a great, a great thing to add on our own. You know, and again, you have to have a sense of trust for students to be able to answer this honestly, and it would need to be totally anonymous and those sorts of things. But it's a great place to get information about your own inclusiveness. Um, okay, if you'll click again, uh, Kate, thank you. Um, so I want to I want to hush for a minute because I know that uh, in the pre-survey you did before uh, this webinar today, we saw you all came up with some great things of something uh, that you're already doing for inclusivity in your, your uh, classrooms in terms of accessibility and other issues. So I would like to have a, a few minutes of discussion about what have you already done to take some of these things and actually use it at IntroPsych. And then we'll have a moment or two of what do you need to do. Um, and you can either put it in the chat or you can unmute. Um, this would be a fine time to unmute because I want to take about maybe you know, three or four minutes for this. What have you done in your classroom to Would it be promote? okay, Liz, if I maybe stop sharing the screen and then we can have the bigger that's Love it. Okay. Don't forget the questions. What have you done to promote inclusivity? And then what do you what what, what do you need to do? Like what could you do? Okay, so how does this re relate to the intro psychology initiative? It relates you know, this idea of, of inclusive pedagogy. It relates because one of the seven key themes is psychology values diversity, promotes equity, and fosters inclusion in support pursuit of a more just society. I can't tell you how proud I am to have been working with the IPI that we have this theme here. Because uh, if, wow, we the, the world needs uh, more justice. It needs more uh, kindness. It needs, we need to pursue a more just society. And psychology, if we don't step up to the plate, who's who's gonna? So I'm really, really uh, proud of this uh, of this work. So let me back up for a minute and tell you how we got to this this theme. So uh, let's go to the next, uh, next slide real quick, and I'll give you just a quick background here. So the InterPsych initiative kind of grew out of this uh, meeting in Puget Sound about a decade prior, where a lot of work was done on, um, you know, looking at the psychology major and you know what should be you know what should be in the psychology major but not really focusing on the intro psych course even though it's the most popular course in the world and country and it's you know we we touch so many students and we have such an opportunity and so what APA decided to do was get a group of people together with we had various focuses and um, really do a deep dive examination of the intro psych course. So there were all these different subgroups of the IPI overall. There was one that worked on the student learning outcomes. I, my group worked on teacher training. There was one on course design. So we all had our own little focuses, foci, and then we would, you know, then we came out with this, this proposal. And so the 
intro psych course now, what the, the IPI proposes is that it is based on these pillars. And this, this might look familiar to you. It might not. It's okay if it doesn't. But this has been around for, for a little bit. And these are these, we've got these five pillars of content knowledge in, um, in psychology, right? In intro psych, biological, cognitive, developmental. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. And then within each one of those pillars, you see kind of the standard intro psych chapters, right? Because let's face it, the early, early, early textbook authors set the tone for our course and decided what should be in there, right? So you see these standard chapters um, under these pillars. So what the, what the proposal suggests and what this pillar model suggests is that research methods actually should run through all of these. Like research methods is the foundation, foundation of psychological science, and it should run through all of these. And so as we should, we should be talking about research methods, not as a standalone chapter, but when we're doing sensation perception, when we're doing lifespan, when we're talking about health, that we are teaching and, and reinforcing research methods throughout the whole time. And then we also, though, decided that that there needed to be um, these integrative themes. So that down there you see research methods, right? And so we've got these um, uh, student learning outcomes for research methods. And then we also said there need to be integrative themes. Psych you know, you know, because we all teach intro, it can be very disjointed. This week we're doing memory and then we're going to switch and we're going to talk about personality. And then we switch and, you know, we need to have some themes, some themes that we can weave throughout that kind of uh, show the continuity of psychology. So we based it on this pillar model. Okay, next slide. And then came up with seven student learning outcomes. So in the introductory psych course, students are expected to, with regard to psych content, the content in those pillars, they need to define and explain basic psychological concepts. They need to interpret research findings related to these concepts. They need to apply psychological principles to personal growth and other aspects of everyday life. These shouldn't be too far off from most departments' um, learning outcomes. That's related to the psych content. And then with regard to scientific thinking, um, the uh, student learning outcomes are describe the advantages and li limitations of research strategies, evaluate, design, or conduct psychological research. It's an intro level, right? So not everybody conducts it, but there are some that, that have labs attached. Definitely on exams, we might say design a correlational uh, study as opposed to an experimental, experimental one or something like that. Draw logical and objective conclusions about behavior from empirical evidence. Examine how psychological science can be used to counter of substantiated statements, opinions, or beliefs. Wow, these are important learning outcomes for, for preparing our students for the world that they are entering and the world we hope they make. Go to the next slide. The world we hope they make more just, right? The world we hope they make more just. So we have the student learning, we've got the pillars, We've got the student learning outcomes that, again, are, uh, go through every, through all those content area pillars. And then we have seven integrative themes that we're asking intro instructors to draw from, draw from, uh, pull through the different uh, content knowledge, right? Pull through these different things. And the one we're interested in today, you can look at all these, again, in the, the um, handout or the document I'll give you with resources. It'll give you a link to the, um, to the, uh, um, APA, APA, IPI stuff. One that we're interested in today is D, psychology values diversity, promotes equity, and fosters inclusion in pursuit of a more just society. We cannot touch that one if we don't have an inclusive classroom. If we're not using inclusive teaching practices, then it would just be performative. It would just be lip service, okay? All right. Um, let's go to the next one. So here for this theme, um, the uh, the committee, the IPI committee came up with some recommendations and then I've added some, came up with some recommendations about where you can include this and I've added some. The ones that just come to mind really quickly, right, are racial and cultural identity, stereotypes and prejudice, racism, implicit, explicit bias. So great, social psych, I'm a social psychologist by training. Social psych, we got you covered. We can help you cover theme D. But if we're really looking, this as a theme we're gonna draw throughout, 
Let's look at it in other areas. What about in re- when we talk about research methods, biases and testing, surveys and sampling, biases and testing when we're talking about intelligence, um, health disparities, and wh- where do these health disparities come from from a systematic way, medical mistrust. If you think about stress and talking about environmental stress and ambient stress um, and stress responses, um, all kinds of interesting things to talk about there in terms of justice. And then even issues like happiness and the positive psychology. How can you take some of these things and then apply them to uh, issues of equity and issues of pursuit of happiness for people uh, equity, equitably across the board? The main thing I think of when I think of this key theme is I think about any content I'm teaching in intro psych is how can knowing this specific psychology content be used for the greater good? How? How? And I'm just in the point in my teaching career, no offense to like, you know, my administrators or my department chair, but if I can't answer that question, then it's a bit of a waste of my class time right now. I want my classes, although I'm going to hit my learning outcomes, I want my classes, I want my students to get out there and be leaders, leaders for a more just and humane society. And so how, how is it that learning about operational definitions is going to make them a better leader for more just and humane society? It definitely is going to make them better, right? They, if you, you can't really critique psycho you know babble if you don't know what how they define things and if you don't know about operational definitions you don't even know how to ask how they define things so really anything like that i i've used it i've used that as a guiding question and that has really helped me think about ways to integrate that theme throughout okay next thank you so turning back over to you um, and, I, and I guess I'm going to do like three questions here, even though there's only two. So before we go back where we can see each other, what are some ways you've already touched on this theme in your course? Uh, Dr. Garcia gave us a great one. Thank you for that. Like, who would have thought classical conditioning, except you found a way to integrate that into to, um, classical conditioning? Um, so what are some ways you already have done this? Or what are some ways you could, we can blend these, what some ways you could do this? And I'll also just answer some questions about IPI, because I I'm, I'm short on time, and I know that I went through that quickly, so I'm also happy to answer those as well. I am being aware of the time and that I am supposed to turn this over to colleagues right at this time, so I'm going to uh, turn it over to Christine, who's going to talk a little bit more about this, but I love talking about this stuff. Uh, You'll see my email if you want to um, email me your, um, like, I ideas and I'll definitely I'll definitely capture the chat now but I would love to hear more of your ideas I share everything all of my ideas and I would love to uh, share and steal some of yours as well so um, thank you so much for letting me talk about it and again uh, it's just a privilege to be here thanks so yeah, Christine I'll turn it over to you sure there are some great ideas in, in this chat too I think Carlise you said that we were going to share this with folks afterwards because I wouldn't want you to miss them there's some really nice things here yeah, I was thinking we could capture that and then also for the survey feedback that people had some ideas about what they're doing to increase their own, you know, create a diverse and equitable classroom. So we, we can do that. And I just saved I just saved the chat. So there we go. Yeah, asynchronous ideas too. That's super helpful. So super. Okay, Kate, you can share the slides again if you like. So I should introduce myself. I'm Christine Bruni. I've been working with Dave Myers for over three decades and with Nathan for almost a decade now um, on their psychology projects, which has been just wonderful. Um, Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about their latest project, which is coming out um, next week in Achieve, which is super exciting. Um, Some of you may be familiar with some of these uh, aspects. But I mean, Dave and Nathan themselves could speak better to this, the hundreds of updates throughout their texts always, but especially on the material related to DEI, because that is so fast changing. And I'd say social psych and the sex, gender and sexuality chapters particularly are are really well updated in the new edition. Um, Also a shout out to Selena Brody, who I think is on our call today. I think I saw your name, Selena. Um, We had asked a similar question from uh, of other instructors about what they'd like to have to be able to teach DEI topics more effectively in their courses. And one thing we often heard was, it's hard to find an example for every single chapter. 
And Selena had done this so wonderfully. She created these activities, instructors resource activities that focus on diversity and highlight women, uh, often women of color who have done important things in psychology. And it's just a great stepping off point uh, to, to use those activities. And there's one for every chapter in exploring psychology. Um, the historical timeline, you've seen this if you've seen uh, Dave and Nathan's book previously. Uh, we have had a timeline before, but Selena did some work with us and focused more on the diverse contributions to psychology. Uh, and it's also well illustrated. So that's now an appendix in, in Exploring Psychology 12th edition. Um, and then I would just say that part of the move to achieve, part of the reason that we're moving to achieve from our previous platform that was Launchpad, is that Achieve is, uh, handles accessibility issues better. And I thought I saw a lot of you talked about that in your survey responses. I know that's really increasingly important. So we can jump to the next slide. I think we have a couple of samples in here. So this is these are some samples from Selena's work on the timeline. Uh, you'll see in 1959, we've got Keturah Whitehurst uh, as a sample uh, Selena also has a great activity about Whitehurst contributions in her uh, instructor's manual options. Uh, we've got Kenneth Clark, the Sues, Daryl and Stanley Sue in 1972. Martha Bernal, who often doesn't get much attention and should, as should Marigold Linton. Uh, so these are, these are some nice examples of folks who are in the timeline. Uh, and that's again in an appendix now in exploring 12th edition. And here's just a small sample. So this is just the first five chapters here. Uh, and obviously if you want more information, I mean, Selena, you're on the call. I, sorry, I probably should have told you I'd shout out, but um, she's got lots of great ideas. But these, uh, these are different activities you can do with students related to like the hidden figures in psychology for chapter one, um, Alice Lee, how, how gender and race shaped research agendas. Um, chapter two, Marion Diamond, who's also in the book now in chapter two, talking about the whole concept of neuroplasticity. She gets a lot, she should get a lot of credit for that. Uh, chapter three, Jennifer Everhart. Uh, chapter four is the Whitehurst activity. Chapter five, Evelyn Hooker, depathologizing same-sex attractions. These are just a few of the examples, but there's some really nice ones. And I guess that's it. So I guess we're turning it back to Kate. All right, well, I see that we have four minutes until the top of the hour. So uh, before everyone goes, I want to um, say thank you so much to both to Coltrane for um, talking about Macmillan and the direction we're going and to Liz for helping us sort of piece things together with the APA IPI. I think there's gonna be a lot of discussions happening about that, how we can support your efforts as you start to um, find ways to integrate those um, new themes into your classrooms and into your discussions. So we look forward to hearing more from you. So, you know, so most of you, I think are using one of Dave and Nathan's books. So um, it helps us so much to hear from you. So always let us know your feedback and how we can best um, support you. So we do also wanna know how helpful this was. So in the chat, we're gonna put in here a survey. And if before you log out, it's only a few questions. If you could just click on the survey link in the chat that Mallory is putting in there and fill out the quick survey, and then you can give us a little wave before you log out. Um, also, there are two more Thursdays coming up. Um, if you'd like to attend, those are each one hour also. Uh, the next one next week is student engagement um, and assessment and analytics. And then the one after that is student engagement and student activities. Um, so hopefully some of you will be on, I think I've seen some of your names on the registrations for those already, but if you need to get registered for those, um, there's still plenty of time. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for your contributions. Fill out that quick survey, and then hopefully and, we'll see you next Thursday. And, and Kate, yeah. can, I, can I just jump in quickly mm -hmm. and, and just, again, say thank you to everybody who, uh, who came and took a, a piece of your afternoon. And, and also, I, I know that many of you, um, you maybe you have questions or you if you're like me, you get out of the Zoom meeting and suddenly all of these questions that you wanted to ask and you didn't. Um, please don't hesitate. Send me an email. Send David. Send, send both of us an email. And uh, we sh we work on these books uh, every single day of every single week of every single year. And so we want to make them as good as possible. Um, and so if there's something that maybe you think that we could do better, 
don't hesitate any any day of the week to uh, to let us know whether it's related to DEI or anything else. So thank you so much for being here and for allowing us to help help you in teaching our science. Mm-hmm. And students, while you're filling out the survey, I'll say students too, um, getting feedback from students is great. I hosted a first student focus group uh, over Zoom. I haven't had a student focus group in a long time, but I had, I was working with, um, we had an externship here uh, at program at McMillan. I was working with a student who's a sophomore, I think at North Carolina A&T. And we did a student focus group about the new video serial, video series that we have that's going to be in Achieve, the new platform. Um, oh my gosh, it was so interesting hearing from students about these new videos. You know, they have a lot of opinions about the, the visuals and the videos. So that was super fun. So always great to hear from your students. And I know I had reached out to some of you on this call about inviting some students to participate. So thanks for thanks for getting the word to some of your students. It was great. Mm-hmm.